Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. You join us today for our pay-per-view with AEW. AEW, have a nice day. A tribute to our matchmaker, Mick Foley. Nice wee gesture there. And hopefully some people will have a nice day out of this particular pay-per-view. Built up quite well. And of course it is our final pay-per-view before Double or Nothing and I'm really excited for what is going to go down at Double or Nothing. That is going to be a stellar card. So as always, thanks for tuning in. It's much appreciated. If you want to get social, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subs, etc. All deeply appreciated, as I say. Any feedback, I will always get back to you. And of course, if you want to buy the game, or you just want to check out some mods, or other people's Be The Bookers, then please check out the description below for that kind of... Yeah, for the link to get you sorted with that, basically. But any questions, don't be afraid to ask. We are in the PNC Park in the Tri-State region, so we are Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the home, of course, of Kurt Angle, I believe. But looking forward to this one. Full 225 minutes allocated to the show have been filled. No pre-show matches, straight on a pay-per-view. Ladies and gentlemen, this is AW. Have a nice day. So 36,900 exactly at PNC Park, so... That seems to be a good sellout. We start off with Mick Foley in the ring. He says this is the only time he's going to take up today. He doesn't want the show to be anything about him. I know he's got the name, but it's all about the wrestlers and the performers tonight. So he just says, thank you for turning up. I hope you enjoy the show he's put together. And he just says, watch out for some big hitters that are arriving in AEW as they strive to get bigger and bigger. So Mick Foley's promo, 71. Let's kick it off with our first action of the night. So it was a tag team match, and it was about that had good heat and decent wrestling. The feud between the team of the TNT champion Claudio Castagnoli and Tyler Bate against Ace Austin and Lance Archer. And it was Castagnoli and Tyler Bate that defeated Austin and Archer in 13.35 when Castagnoli pinned Archer with the neutralizer. I think actually all four would be quite close to each other in performance. Obviously the zero chemistry is not ideal, but... It just means it'll be more Ace Austin accompanied by Lance Archer rather than them going together. But uh, I just wanted to make Claudio look still a million bucks as champion. Ace Austin obviously lose, but he doesn't take the fall, so he's still protected. And a 66 rating is pretty okay for the opener. That one was the Steal the Show match, because I've got a lot of matches that are over 15 minutes, so they don't qualify for that. So that could have maybe put some pressure on them which would have possibly saw that match flop even more, but 66 still happy. Uh, yeah, two declining physical abilities. Yeah, you're probably looking at if they had um, chemistry and they were in their prime, maybe even out in the 70s, so still pretty good. But I win for the babyface team. After match-up, just celebrations between the champion and, well, could it be a guy that's going to have a match against them soon in the future? We'll see in that division, but 69, none. Or less. Moving on to the women's tag team tournament, and it was a bout that had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling as Ali and Penelope Ford defeated Nikki Storm and Heidi Lovelace in 10 13 when Ali pinned Heidi Lovelace with a handful of the tights. Nikki Storm carried the match in terms of ring ring performance, Penelope was a weak link. Which means that the Blontarages Ali and Penelope Ford will be on the final at double or nothing. And that was a 60 rated match, so still pretty good. You can see, obviously, in terms of in ring performance, Nikki Storm surpasses. But you'll also notice Alexi debuted her big league star gimmick and it was poor. Of course, we've signed Alexa Bliss. It doesn't show in the text, but she distracts, as you'll see in the booking details, or the road agent, no, sorry, distracts Nikki Storm to allow Lovelace to get pinned by Ali. Meaning, we obviously have Alexa Bliss, and that's what she is going to be doing in AEW to start with. Um, still looking to get the attributes up for Heidi, Ali, and Penelope Ford, but I'm still happy with that. Even though the fans don't like it, we can hopefully grow these performers into good assets in our women's division. So they're in the final. They are eliminated, so no double championship for Nikki Storm. And after the matchup, we just basically have... Alexa, bless her, Lexi, she's going to be known here in AEW, and she just basically says she's obviously been friends with Nikki Storm before, hasn't heard from Nikki Storm since Nikki Storm's been in AEW. You know, what kind of friend does that? And she just says she's just here to prove that she is far better than that loser. 
Nikki Storm. She never liked her. But if she want, if he's wanting more, she'll speak about it on Dynamite. So a sixty rated segment for that. Moving along, Brody Lee alongside Stu Grayson and Eva Luno. This was a fifty nine rated segment, and he's basically just if you watch Being the Elite way 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 back, he's just basically saying don't make an arse of this, or if you like foul language, just don't fuck this up basically. So, six man match, Trios Championships on the line. Can Mr. Brody Lee lead the Dark Order to victory? But of course, he doesn't. So, in terms of in ring work, Brody Lee was the head and shoulders of the rest, which is good to see. But the decent matchup saw the Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, the Luchasaurus, and Marco Stunt defeat the Dark Order in 14 13 when Jungle Boy pinned Evil, you know. So, yeah, Marco Stunt has a championship, he is the Trios Championship, a 66 rated match. A pretty vocal crowd, didn't seem to be thrilled, we've seen the Luchasaurus. But again, we'll work with him, we'll try and get him over. But it's just giving more people stuff to do, and delighted to have a Trios Championship. Brody Lee, an 84 performance, he was spectacular, and he looked excellent in this match. Moving on to the other match in the Women's Tag Team Tournament. It was about to have a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling as Hikaru Shida and Mayu Iwatani defeated Abaddon and Priscilla Kelly when Mayu Iwatani pinned Priscilla Kelly with a dragon suplex. 50 rated match up here. It's a simple story we're telling here that the baby faces in this instance weren't intimidated by Abaddon, so they pick up the win and in the final. But it's cool, it means we've got Abaddon in the Dark Order alongside Priscilla Kelly. It means we've got a final of a double or nothing already of Hikaru Shida and Mayu Iwatani against Ali and Penelope Ford. We're actually doing something with women's division. As I say, hopefully we just make it get stronger and stronger. John Moxley and MGF have been at it for a while and MGF is basically saying he's going to beat him and Wardlow is going to beat Orange Cassidy and Moxley and Moxley's never ever going to get his hands on MGF. 80 promos, so that's our best promo of the night that will count for us. And we'll head into that match after John Moxley beats that when 86, just an entrance where he comes out of the crowd, crowd goes wild, and they start the match. So 86 for that. Match up itself, eh, well, done really, really well. I didn't expect that. And about the fantastic heat and great wrestling, Orange Cassidy and John Moxley defeated MGF and Wardlow when Orange Cassidy pinned Wardlow with a super kick. 83, 95 for Moxley, 75 for Orange Cassidy. We're kind of trying to obviously get some of Moxley's overness onto Cassidy as well, try and push him. Because I didn't quite expect him to get his overness he has in real life, so fair play to him. So yeah, Moxley's team wins. Does that mean he gets his match up with MGF? We'll obviously find out about that down the line. We then had a six man tag, which was superb. And it was the Death Triangle, Ray Phoenix, Pentagon Jr. and Pac, who defeated Austin Creed, Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy in 15.30 when Pac pinned Austin Creed with a shooting star sent on during the matchup with Matt Hardy turn on Austin Creed. So 82, Matt Hardy the weak link, some great performances in there, Omega 86, Pac 92, Pentagon 87, it's as if they just turned up a level for a pay-per-view. And of course, Matt Hardy, 12 segments, he has turned into a rich snob. And that was an initial rating of very good. So I think we all know if he's going rich snob, which character he'll be portraying, Big Money Matt. So 82, very, very happy with that. Moving along, Matt Hardy then just beats him down. Just says to Austin Creed, you didn't pay me the money. Sure, I was happy to help, but if you don't pay me the money, I'm big money, Matt. I want nothing to do with you. So that's a 70 rated segment. Moving along, we've got a promo from the Titans. They say, well, they are a tag team. They are going for a loan to win the championship. But if they need to work together, they shall. So that's a 73 for the Fatal 4-Way match for the AEW Championship. And that was a 78, so justified in not making it the main event. And about they had fantastic heat and great wrestling. Hangman Page defeated Miro, Brian Cage, and Jacob Fatu in 2251 when Hangman pinned Miro with the Adam's Apple. Hangman makes the fourth defence of the AEW World Championship. So, a 78, Hangman carries the match, 
I think it was a bit obvious he was going to win. The plan was always going to be Miro v Hangman, and with how bad that flopped the last time. Adding Cage and Fat to win, protecting him without either getting pinned, just made sense, but so far the Miro experiment hasn't really worked, and hopefully we can make that work in the latter stages, or in the, the peak anyway, of 2021. And Hangman celebrates, that's an 85, so he's over, that's good to see. Moving along, the Sex Gods cut a promo hyping their upcoming match with the Young Bucks for the AW Tag Team Championships. It's an 86, another strong promo. Jericho just saying he's 51 now, but he's in the prime of his life. He's the GOAT, and this kid, Sammy Guevara, is just another world-class athlete, and he's going to be an absolute star. Match itself was a 78. It was an exceptional matchup that saw the Young Bucks defeat the Sex Gods in 1609 when Nick Jackson pinned Chris Jericho with a Meltzer driver. The Young Bucks win the AEW World Tag Team Championships. We had to protect Jericho to put uh, Nick over, but the reality is Jericho's technical attributes don't quite match up to the product, so obviously we can use them for promos, but in ring it's a big decline and we need to be looking elsewhere. So. Titles on the Young Bucks, they're obviously going to get some runs in real life, might even have one by the time this goes live, but I just feel like that was a sensible decision to make, give them the belts, because after the matchup, the Young Bucks first off celebrate, which is an A, that kind of gives away what's happening next, as Sammy Guevara just beats down Chris Jericho. Jericho just looks fallen, he looks beaten. It just looks like the youngster has just had enough and he absolutely just batters Chris Jericho down. It's been for three segments, we'll turn on babyface and the turn was a complete success. So the champion is babyface and it looks like the inner circle possibly could be no more. So 79 there. Heading up to our main event, Cody cuts a promo on Darby Allen. He just says Darby's one of the big stars but Darby wants this no disqualification match and He's happy to give it if he can help not only keep himself at the top of his game, but help elevate a young star. He's all for it. So that was an 84. All the match to lover. It's been given a lot of time. 81. An exceptional matchup. Cody defeated Darby Allen in a no DQ match in 30 35 with a beautiful disaster. 81. 87 played in 85. Darby took a stunt bump as well. I wanted to do a big bump, but we're not a big enough company for him to accept that. But I just feel matches like that can elevate both talents and the negatives was just the announced work of Excalibur. God damn you Excalibur. And we finished the show with Cody just putting Darby Allen through a table. Just kind of Darby trying to attack him. Cody going, nah we're not having this and just putting Darby down once and for all. So an 80 rating there for that. The show itself is an 82, so that's obviously peaked because of a lot of consistent good ratings on pay-per-view. A lot of good promos, a lot of good matches, and that will increase our popularity in 56 regions. Don't need really to make a speech. I only do it for kind of like a lot of people with negative morale, but not really the instance here. Uh, I'm only going to look at a few things. Finances, we're going to look at size. I can't look at the, the roster and the overness because it would give away a spoiler for them. Um, an acquisition, which we need to keep under wraps for a wee bit longer. So, we're looking to bring in Luke Gallows. We've got him shortlisted. Taylor Bate is pretty good in the ring, that's good to know from Cody. Have a nice day, get 958,000 viewers, which is a buy rate of 1.59. So, in terms of size, 76, we're 1 off. So if we can get one more really, really good show in 82, we'll go big and then hopefully we can maybe get Mr. William Osprey, which will help us basically start getting 90 odd rated shows and maybe get one step closer, that 100 show for the achievements. That's the only one that's going to be my bane of my life in this. Financially, whilst the profit margin at the moment is 1.8, that's obviously going to go when you've got miscellaneous and tax. We at the moment have had our best pay-per-view numbers. Ticket sales are a wee bit down compared to a couple of previous months. 
Merch is up, which is good, but the worry is, of course, you add in the extra amount for worker costs. So that's it. We'll end it there. Hopefully we'll have a rundown in a few weeks once a few people debut. And hopefully one day I'll stop signing people because the roster's massive. But as I say, we're getting closer and closer to having two brands, two shows, and really taking this company to higher, higher levels. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of the show. Any predictions for the rest of the Double or Nothing card? And until next week's Dynamite, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.